Okay, when we left off, um, we had gotten to the point where we had our color washed in on all the elements. And I had gone ahead and did the rest of the work on it, but had forgot to click the record button. So I had to stop and go back and redo the whole drawing and the bird and the color washes and everything up to the point where I left off on the first video. So if this one looks slightly different, you know, because every time I do something it never looks exactly the same, that's the reason. This is a, this was the, the one that I had originally finished, but, you know, the last steps of um, intensifying the colors and shadows and things didn't get recorded, so I'm, I'm starting over from that point. So we've got our color washes on everything, and we want to go back and reinforce some of these. They're, the bird just looks a little bit washed out, so we want to go back and add some stronger washes of reds and a little bit of bit more shading and highlighting. So we're going to continue working with the naphthol red, and the first thing we're going to do is float some of this color back in over top of our initial layers to just make them a little brighter and more intense. So I'm going to turn this a little bit and just start working some of this color back in over our base coats. And you can use water on your brush or you can use some one of the mediums like the uh, faux finish medium that we've been using or a um, little glazing medium whatever you happen to have. So I'm going to put a little bit of this full finish medium out. And I do like it because it's about the consistency of paint. So it keeps your, the weight of your paint, but gives you the transparency of the added medium. So I'm here floating all around the front edge of this cardinal's face. You can just see how that is just brightening him up more. And again, you want to keep this paint as transparent as possible so we maintain our inking lines. I'm going to come here under this little rough on his head. I'll put another layer of color over here. just brush that in here on some of these other areas of his body. We'll do a little down here along the front of his chest. Probably color cover up the shell that we like that that golden color in there. It's dark in here under these these leaves. And we're going to come back in with another. We're going to use some alizarin crimson to to darken these shadows even more. Try to keep it off your white paper. Sometimes I'm not too good at that. Now on 
the beak, we're going to shade that a little bit. And I'll show you here on our finished one what we're doing. We're going to add some shadows here at the bottom and here where the beak meets in the center. So to do that, I'm going to use some um, of the raw sienna. which is our, our honey brown, golden brown color, and a touch of alizarin crimson. And that'll make a, a deep red wine color. And we're going to just look that here along the bottom of his beak. Medium, the faux finish medium on our brush helps helps us work that color out and soften it. And then we're going to come here along that line at the center of his beak, right above it, to to shade that. And you can just drag the corner of your brush back up the top and just put a little bit of that shadow here along that top edge. But you can see where that's giving him some some contour to his beak. Okay, we're gonna you know add some more shading to his body. I think this paint is set up. So we're going to use just a little bit of the loser and crimson by itself. And you can see that's a real nice deep cherry red that is going to just intensify that color even more as we put it on. We'll do some here. the side of his body over here by these leaves where it's going in behind the leaves we want to darken that a lot more so we'll work this color in amongst those leaves Also put in a little bit of um, burnt sienna with that color, and that'll again tone down some of the reds just a little bit because it's more of a red brown color. And again, you know, darken a little bit more. Do some of this down on his tail. just want to create a little separation so it looks like there's you know some folded feathers coming together some layers of that
just picking up um, and brush mixing on my palette some of the burnt sienna and alizarin and crimson. If you want a little darker shade, just you could also work in a little bit of raw umber into that mix. Here in the back of his head and here in his chest, I'd like to, to lighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to use some, a little bit of the yellow oxide that was the yellow color that we added for the base of his beak and this yellow here on his chest and head. And I'm going to mix just a little bit of white in with that. And again, we want this to be transparent. We don't want it to to be real heavy, but then I'm going to come back and just start dabbing some of that into these areas where we want to strengthen the highlight a little bit. And I've got a lot of that for finish medium in it, so we're keeping it transparent. This doesn't have to be real smooth, it can be a little choppy, so it, there's kind of a little feather texture. It's picking up a little bit more white. a little bit of this down on these tail feathers to create a little bit more highlight. I'm just sort of dragging it out to add some touches of highlights to the edges of these separations of the tail feathers. I'm just working here like on the tip of my angle brush. I've just got a little bit of paint on there and I'm not putting the whole brush down. I'm just dragging that, that tip along. real soft golden color. One more layer over this. I'm just a shade lighter with the extra white that we've added in. I 
to darken up the black on his face a little bit, so I'm picking up some black on the tip of my brush. I'm just going to, again, just sort of side load that around the edges to darken and give that face a little bit more weight. You can still see the, the pin lines through it. It's, it's still transparent, but it just, overall, it's a little darker color. As you can see on my palette how washy that is. Give the eye a little bit more. You want to kind of maintain that little highlight. That's your white paper. But if you know if you make a mistake and cover it, you can always dab that in with white paint. And if you'll notice, there's just a little bit of an eyelid around the eye that separates it from the face. It it was a little area of um, white paper that I left and just put a real soft wash of black over it. Now, if you um, lose that, you can also take a liner brush in your medium gray and just softly color in a little line around the eye to create that eyelid. And you can build this up in layers. You don't have to do it all in one, in one application. It, better probably to do a couple more transparent layers. Okay, so his face is pretty colored in now. And let's go back and add a little more attention to the leaves. And we've got our base coats on each one, but I feel like they could use a little bit more highlighting or shading. Actually shading, because we're not really going to highlight these leaves too much. So we're going to go in and, you know, add some more shadows with our phthalo yellow-green. So phthalo yellow-green and a little bit of this black that we were using on the face. And you can just flip those shadows along wherever you want to add a little more definition to the leaves. So I'm, I'm looking at like these bottom edges. You can float a little dark green over those to um, add more shadow. A lot of times it'll be here where you have done your heaviest inking. So you can just kind of float over the middle of these leaves, over top of your inking. And again, it just reinforces that and gives it a, a little more weight. On these like in the center where I'm coming down one side of the vein with the tip of the brush and then I'm flipping the brush over so the long tips pointing down and coming along the other side of this vein just to darken on both sides.
on the tree trunks, we're going to darken them a little bit more. We had based them with gray and added a little bit of burnt umber shading to them. And you can add some little touches of burnt sienna, and that will just add just a little bit more color. It'll pick up the reds of the bird and add some touches into the color of the bark. So I'm just real loosely washing a little bit of that burnt sienna here and there. You can also darken it more with some raw umber. That's your really dark, bittersweet chocolate brown. Not too much water. In any place that you really want to add some real dark shadows, you can pop some of that raw umber in here. The side of the tree trunk's very dark, so you can put more of that down in here. Just to darken those shadows even more. I'd like to, to dry brush some, some little um, highlights here in the on the bird and on some of the feathers and leaves and trunk. And so I'm going to do this with a, a liner brush because I want this very sketchy. So I'm just picking up a little white on my brush and I'm just holding it, almost laying it flat on the surface and just very lightly drag I've got a little too much water in. Just want to scuff some of that, that white in some of these highlight areas. bit here on the beak. And we can drag some here along the highlights on the trunk. You can use a little flap to do this too. I just meant to look like there's a little bit of light picking up and reflecting off the texture. You don't want much water, very little, if any, water in your brush because you want this to come off very dry. You don't want it to wash off the brush.
touch a little on leaves here and there if you want. Some that you just want to call a little more attention to or separate from the, the one next to it. I said every time I paint one of these it, it's going to look a little different. I may do something in a different position or just add a little more shading or highlighting than I did on the one before. So don't worry about them being a little more individualized. If you get any, you know, highlights maybe that you think are a little too strong, just wait till they dry and then go back and, and wash a little color back over, turn some down. Then back to one more thing on the head that I'd like to do is wash a little bit of um, black into these shadows. If you look at the photograph, and you can just see some little tinges of blacks here in the back of the head. So I'm going to make this very washy. A little bit of water and a little bit of faux finish medium so we have a very transparent and I'm just going to very softly soften that in so I'm touching it down and then I'm going to just pick up the other end of my brush and just kind of drag it out and Nudge it around and put a little bit down here on the bird's lower body. Again, that just darkens those shadows a little more. get these little negative spaces in between the branches and leaves just a, a little more in shadow. And a little bit of black over those. So I just want to darken a little bit. I'm just putting a little bit of wash of that black over. So I think we're about there. Probably doesn't, like I said, it won't look exactly like my original one, which is this one here. And this is the one that's in your pattern. So um, you can work from this one, but I, you know, repainted it as I said, just to 
to give you an idea of these very last steps that I went through that I forgot to press record on. So I'm looking here, I think I can add a little bit more blacks in here. And these aren't real smooth, I'm, you know, adding just a little texture with my brush and it gives the effect of kind of like feather texture. I, you know, I hope you had fun doing a pen and ink, and I would like to redo this design in another month's lesson and do it all in acrylics, you know, on a canvas with a painted background, so we can um, try it in a different technique. But you can use just about any photograph, you know, that you'd like to do a pen and ink for. Just do, do the steps that I had. Take a photograph. Um, trace it out on a clear acetate and create your line drawing and I think it would be really fun technique to try with different designs of your own side by side old and new just slight variation differences so that's it for this lesson and we'll be back with another one